Welcome to DIY Volts. I'm Seth. Today I have the EG418K. This giant inverter is packed full of features. I want to unbox it, show you everything that comes in this package, and then talk about the features of this unit. In a future video, I will be doing a full install, so be sure to stay tuned for that. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the features of this inverter. This inverter is from Signature Solar. It was shipped to me on a pallet wrapped with some clear wrap and the box was in perfect condition and I see no damage whatsoever to the unit itself. When it comes to unboxing this, there is about two inches of foam on all sides of the inverter. So even if there was an accident and this was dropped, it is gonna be quite well protected. Now this does weigh 120 pounds, so be very careful moving this around. I had to break the box down and slide this out in order to get it out by myself. And then getting it up here on this little table was not fun, but it's up here now. So let's go ahead and go over the features of this unit. There is a cardboard template in the box that allows you to properly mount this unit. Now you'll see here on the mounting bracket, there is an up arrow right here. The inverter is going to slip onto these two clips here and just rest down. At first, it may seem as though it should mount like this, where it hangs in these clips, but that's not right. It is gonna be up like this, so keep that in mind. Now, the inverter can still swing off the wall, and so these two L brackets are included, and that will attach to the inverter and then to the wall to prevent this from being able to uh, swing forward. So that's very handy to have. The user manual is fantastic. Probably the best user manual I have ever seen on any electronic device like this. It's full color and it has every menu item. It has all the data. It's even got uh, wire configurations in there. So you will have everything you need in this user manual. Fantastic. Um, very good to have. We'll be using that to install this here in a little while. There is a couple of data communication cables. There's the inverter and the battery side of this cable. Uh, this cable will connect between units, which we don't have to worry with right now. Um, now my batteries that I'm gonna be using are the Ethos from Big Battery, and they already have the communication cable included. This right here is the Wi-Fi dongle. It will allow you to connect this unit to the internet and control it through the app or monitor, and uh, we'll install that as well. Now with Signature Solar, the inverter is gonna use the keyword signature to um, connect to that Wi-Fi dongle. Now in this little bag right here, there are some covers, so you can cover up those knockouts that are on the bottom of the unit. There's also a little bit of mounting hardware. They include the hardware to go to a concrete wall, or in my case, I'm gonna be using a three quarter inch plywood to get that mounted, and so that will be nice and secure. There is also a key in there, which will be used in order to open up the side of the unit here in just a moment. This little box contains these CT clamps, and they attach through ethernet, so you can make this cable nice and long if you need to. It's already quite long. The CT clamp is going to go around the grid power coming in, and that will allow the inverter to not feed back into the grid and just keep everything in house. All right, now that we have seen the items that come with the inverter, let's go ahead and move on to looking at the unit itself. The EG418K inverter, tons of features for us to go over. Let's first of all, take a look around the outside of the unit, and then we'll talk about some of the features that it has for its functionality. Starting with the front face, you can see the EG4 logo right there at the top. Now, if you look down here at the bottom, you'll also see that it says Lux Powertech. This inverter is made by Lux Power and is sold by a few different companies. And so you may see what seems like duplicates of the same product, um, but the EG4 has different features that uh, some of the others do not. And one of the best features of that is a lower price tag. So keep that in mind. Now this top unit right here is not really meant to be opened up. There's even a sticker over here that uh, warns you about voided warranty if you open this up. So keep in mind, don't touch the top, um, but you can open up the bottom as we'll see here in just a moment. The screen has some simple buttons right here. It's got uh, return, up, down, enter, and then it has a normal warning and a fault right over here. 
And we'll get into that uh, in the next video whenever I actually install this unit. So up on the very top, there are some vents here for cooling. Now this unit will not really have any sound or any fans running as long as the power is under about 5,000 watts. Um, so you can expect for this to be quite quiet. Um, that in being said, it will dissipate a bit of heat up here, so you want to have enough clearance. Um, just keep that in mind. Over here on this side, there is a carrying handle, which is extremely valuable because this unit weighs 120 pounds. Right here, this will be your on-off switch. Keep that in mind. Um, that's going to control your solar and some other things. Over here is your rapid shutdown stop. So if you're in a, a rush to get this thing turned off, click that, it'll shut things down. Right down here is where your Wi-Fi module is going to connect. It's got four different screws and it will allow you to um, connect into that port right there. Now on the back of the unit, there are four fans, which for the most part don't run unless you've got a lot of power either being drawn from this or coming into this. Moving over to this side, you've got a couple of warning stickers and here is some information about the inverter. Another handle right there. And then here's where we're going to access the inside of this unit. On the bottom of the inverter, there are several knockouts. You've got your solar input, communications, two for battery. There's a generator, load, and grid. So that's where your wire and cable will be attaching to the inverter. A couple of keys were included. I can get these stuck in here. Get that unlocked. And I'll be able to pop each one of those latches. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. Now I should be able to open this up and we can see what's inside of this unit here. It does have a seal to keep out bugs and moisture. As you can see, there is plenty of room inside of this inverter, so your hands are not going to be cramped and your wires will have plenty of space to move around. Very nice feature to have. Let's start over here at this side. Here is your grid input, load one, load two, and that will go right in there. Over here is your output, so you've got load one and load two, and that's going to be feeding your circuits. Over here, you've got generator, load one, load two, so you can have uh, an, a backup generator right here. Now, if you move up here, you've got your load breakers, so they are all connected, and that will shut this off here and kill the power to whatever you're trying to run. Now, if you move over here, there are four different places for the battery. Two negatives, two positives. Because this unit has the capability of producing 12,000 watts, you have to have those four battery terminals in order to supply that much amperage. Now, if you move down here to the bottom, this is the neutral bus bar, and here is the earth ground over here. Those are uh, huge terminals, which is nice to see. This over here is an extension of that earth ground. If you move over here, you've got your solar input. So it may be hard to see. I'll zoom in. There's the uh, PV input. There's the uh, one, two, and three inputs here. But you'll notice there are two of the one. Those have a potential for 25 amp input, whereas two and three can only do uh, 15 amp on the input. Now, if we move up over here, you'll see all of these Ethernet connections. This one right here is going to be for communication with the battery. You've got your uh, CT clamp right over here, and then these are for parallel to other units. We won't be using those. Now that we've seen the outside of this inverter, let's go ahead and talk about some of its features. This is the 18K, which means it can accept 18,000 watts of solar. You can actually put 21,000 watts in. Of course, solar panels aren't gonna produce, oftentimes, the max value that's on them. And so, if you put 21,000 to this machine, it will hopefully use the full 18. And so um, that's kind of where that uh, separation comes from. As we saw, there were four different places for solar input wires to be placed here on the inverter. The first two slots have one next to them, and that is a combined 25 amp input for the MPPT charging. The positions two and three have a 15 amp input. So whenever you're connecting your solar arrays, just make sure you have 
those values within the 25 or the 15 amp input. This inverter can do 208 or 240 volt output. In my house here, I'm gonna be using 240 volt, which means you'll have two legs, 120, 120, and those can each do 6,000 watts. Now this inverter is capable of unbalanced output. So you can have 6,000 watts running on one leg and nothing on the other, and the inverter is able to handle this just fine. However, in most cases, it's nice to balance your load on your circuit breaker, so keep that in mind. Now with your solar input, this can accept up to 600 volts, but it's only going to use 500 volts with the MPPT, so keep that in mind. Um, and the ideal voltage coming in is, I believe, around 320, so uh, you want to make sure your panels are wired within that uh, range of 140 volts for the minimum and five or 600 volts for the maximum input. When it comes to using the power from the EG418K, there are multiple ways you can set this up. Here in my house, I have a separate critical loads panel and I'm going to be using this whole unit off grid. Now I am still going to be connecting my grid power to the inverter so that if for some reason my batteries drop too low, I can flip a breaker and charge my batteries and use this to power my home from the critical loads panel. If you don't have a critical loads panel though, there are different ways you can connect this. You can do the grid tie limiter, which is using those CT clamps, and that will read the house's incoming amperage and supplement the house. And so if the house isn't using power, the inverter is not producing power. You can also set this up to feed extra power back to the grid. So for instance, if your home is using a thousand watts, the inverter will feed the house with a thousand watts. And if you have a bi-directional meter, you can then use any excess solar coming in to feed the grid back and get some money back from your local power company if that's an option in your area. In my area, that is not an option, so I do not have a bi-directional meter. And so everything is just in-house. I actually have the grid turned off whenever I am using my off-grid system. Now you can also use these inverters to charge batteries from the grid during the low cost time of day. So for instance, let's say your power is 11 cents during the day, but it's 80 cents at night when most people are using their power. Then you can charge your battery during the day when you're at work, and then when you're uh, at the house later that evening, you can then swap over and use your battery power so that you have cheaper power during the nighttime. So keep that in mind, it is also an option. Now this does have a UPS feature or an uninterruptible power supply. And so if you're using your uh, solar and your battery and your grid all together and the grid goes down, this will immediately click over to battery within just a couple of milliseconds and all of your electronics and things will continue to function. However, you'll be running off of the inverter instead of the grid power. So, as you can see, there are lots of different options for using this inverter with your home system. Later in the actual install video, I will be showing you the functionality of the menus and also the app that goes with the Wi-Fi. Both of those are quite simple and easy to use and quite intuitive, actually. I've got uh, a different unit down in my studio space, just like this one, and it is so nice to be able to check that anywhere I am as long as I've got the internet connected. So we will go through the menus and the Wi-Fi whenever I do the actual install. Now the EG418K does have a 12,000 watt output. If that is not enough power for you, you can parallel multiple inverters with batteries and have a lot more power output than just that 12K. So adding two of these together would give you 24,000 watts of output. Now here in my 19,000 square foot home, I'm going to have no problem running everything in here with this one inverter. I've got the well pump on here, the washer, the dishwasher. I have got all the lights and I will not have any problems whatsoever running all of that off of 12,000 watts. I hope you found this quick overview of the EG418K to be helpful. I will have links to the Signature Solar page down below so you can learn more information or get a unit for yourself. Stay tuned for the Ethos battery install, the install of the EG4, and then a few other videos showing how this unit is performing here in my house. I'm Seth with DIY Volts, and I will see you in the next video.